little more on the legal issues surrounding President Trump's travel ban. Let's bring in our panel of Supreme Court experts. Elizabeth Wydra, president of the Constitutional Accountability Center, and Carrie Saravino, chief counsel and policy director at the Judicial Crisis Network. Understanding, ladies, this perhaps might be a little bit out of your sphere of expertise, but given the protests right now and everything that's going on, we want you to weigh in. Elizabeth, it's interesting that so many Democrats I hear keep saying it's immoral, it's immoral, it's immoral, and you hear a few say it's illegal. But if you look back, it seems as though the President of the United States has extraordinarily broad discretion to do what he wants when it comes to immigration, especially as it relates to non-U.S. citizens. Yeah, so absolutely there is a discretion there, but it is importantly and crucially cabined by the Constitution. And that's what's the issue here. We have a confluence of values and constitutional guarantees. We started our country as a multi-religious, tolerant society, and our Constitution guarantees that there will be no religious tests. You will tolerate all religions and not establish one over another. You will not abridge someone's free exercise of a religion. And so what we see here in the opposition to this refugee and travel ban from across the political spectrum, as you just heard, we have conservative Republicans like Dick Cheney right, we, we, joining we with get, folks we, we, to we've say heard this is un-American. I mean, a, a lot of people have said this is un-American or this is a bad idea, but it seems as though, Carrie, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the, the legal challenges have been pretty narrow when, it have, when it's come to this. Well, obviously, and what we hope is that the, the courts, as they're addressing this, and I've been saying this through the last immigration uh, a, a executive order challenge, is that they need to look at not what their personal policy preferences are, what their, wh whether they would do that kind of order, but what the law actually says. Yeah. And I have to say it's a little ironic because we have a lot of people like, uh, like Elizabeth who were, say, who were talking about talking the discretion policy. before, and now, now they're, they're kind of... Wanting to have cabin, didn't it? Well, in, 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 in one thing that's being that's being discussed, and you can see this is President Trump there, who's on the phone. This is tape playback. A couple of minutes ago, this video was taken by the White House pool on a Sunday. He is on a call with the King of Saudi Arabia. You can see there Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, senior advisor, and then also Mike Flynn, who was uh, his national security advisor, sitting there at the desk during this call. To that point, Elizabeth is is you're making this argument and the central argument of you can't have a religious test one of the countries that was not banned was saudi arabia one of the largest muslim countries how do you make the argument that you're having a religious test when you have this kind of relationship with saudi arabia well i think you know there have been questions raised as to which countries are included i think frankly we shouldn't have any ban on refugees coming here based on their religion so some people are saying well, let's expand it i'm certainly not saying that i'm saying let's not go after people because they happen to be Muslim. You heard the president said it wasn't about Muslim, it was about the country. Well, that's what he's saying now. Rudy Giuliani said on your network exactly the opposite. Well, that was a, that's Rudy Giuliani is not part of the administration. Quickly, ladies, we've also heard from the president, and this was the big news that we were going to get this weekend. It sort of was the rollout of who the potential Supreme Court nominee will be. Seems as though the general reporting focuses now on three names, Gorsuch, Hardiman, Pryor. Uh, any of those, uh, Elizabeth, that you'd be okay with? You know, I think whoever the nominee is, it, the burden is on him or her to show that they don't share some of the extreme authoritarian views of the president who's nominating them, and that they will stand up to be a check, whether it's within this context that we're seeing of discrimination against people who might not look like you or pray like you, or whether there'll be a check on important institutional corruption concerns. Isn't that sort of part of the challenge, Carrie? Because if you, if you read about somebody like Pryor, who is so incredibly dogmatic and say you'd say hard right on an issue of abortion but then you read about some of his other views and there's people who say oh no he's too far to the left on other stuff well, I think, the, again, at the end of the day, the question is someone who has to be faithful to the Constitution and the law. That means you're going to have decisions that will uphold laws you might not have voted for or provisions of the Constitution that, that, that may, maybe require you to overturn a law that you otherwise would like. But I think what's so great about all of the people on this list is they are and they have a long record of standing up for what the Constitution and law says, even when they may not agree, agree with it personally. That's exactly the kind of person uh, yeah, you, you, to be re replaced by, and that's the kind of person Trump has promised us. You, you look at that. You look at that list three uh, outspoken jurists you don't tend to question really where they stand ladies uh, we're supposed to get an answer on Thursday about who the president picks we'll have you back to talk about it thank you for being here appreciate your insights on